In this episode, we're talking all about working as a Pinterest manager and how that differs from pure social media management. Listening to JFDI with the two Lauras, the podcast for freelance social media managers. And in this episode, we are joined by Pinterest expert and Inner Hub member Faye Strange. We'll be chatting to her all about what makes a good Pinterest client and if social media managers can easily make the shift to Pinterest management. Keep listening because she shares some awesome tips. So let's start then by letting our listeners know a little bit about you. Um, Like, where are you from? What do you do? (laughs) Fill us in. So I'm Faye. Um, My full name's Faye Strange and my business is called Strange Social. Um, And I am based in Bedfordshire and I'm a Pinterest expert. So I help businesses get more traffic and sales from Pinterest. Amazing. So... I know this because I do stalk you on Pinterest, but talk me through um, your, like, what do you offer? Like, what are your kind of services as a Pinterest expert? Yeah, so I have a range of different services. Obviously, I have Pinterest management, um, but I also do, like, Pinterest audits. I do Pinterest strategies and um, I have a Pinterest course as well. Yes. So I was saying to Laura before we started recording that I used to get really good results from Pinterest, not knowing anything about it when I used to have my um, my cake business before I did this. So I am by no means a Pinterest expert at all. It was totally me winging it. But I am really interested in, to know what is the big difference, do you think, between being a Pinterest manager and like a traditional social media manager? Is there a big difference? Is like like a big journey between one to the other? So the the difference is really the approach to the platform. It's the management of Pinterest is completely different to say the management of Instagram. Mm. Um, so if you were thinking about managing Pinterest for a client, then I'd say you need to understand the platform properly before you get started doing that. And, you know, your processes are different than it would be for any of the other social platforms. But I think as, you know, time has progressed and all the platforms are so kind of different anyway, you would do that for any platform before you started managing it. So in that respect, you know, if you're a social media manager, that's that's what you would do. I think it's worth saying though, because I, I used to manage a Pinterest account for a client and it did exceptionally well may I add (laughs) uh to be fair it wasn't probably my doing it was their doing but um it's so very very different now isn't it Pinterest has gone on such a bit of a journey of its own hasn't it and it's it's very very different from other platforms it's very very different to where it was a few years ago so if people are thinking oh yeah you know what I used to do Pinterest and I loved it I'll be able to just go back and and pick up where I left off actually like I really struggled when I had to go back in there and think right hang on a minute how am I using this and it's there's so many more features and you know there are elements that you can transfer over from some different you know like your the short form videos I think are now becoming a bit of a thing on Pinterest aren't they and so there are elements that maybe you've got skills in different platforms that are obviously very much transferable but it is very much different beast of a platform isn't it yeah it absolutely is and you're right you know over the past couple of years it's gone through so many changes and I am still seeing people who recommend outdated practice on the platform and that's where people you know they're getting confused they're seeing they're not seeing the results so it's really important that you do get up to date with what is best practice on Pinterest and it's still changing and there are changes yet to come this year which I know of but you know they're not quite started on the platform just yet so yeah, you really need to yeah. be doing your up-to-date research. And it's hard, isn't it? Because from a consumer perspective, and I've fallen down this rabbit hole, like last year when I was a bit like, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing. And I bought a Pinterest course. Obviously, if I'd have known you'd got one, I'd have chosen <laughs> yours to just refresh myself. And I was really disappointed because 
I'd, I don't know what I don't know, do I? So when I go on to to find a course and I think, oh, well, this looks good. I took the course and it, it was OK, to be fair. There were things in there that I didn't know, but it was not up to date at all. Like it didn't even mention idea pins. It didn't mention any new things that I wow. knew, which is why then I found you and was started stalking you. And it was a few, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I paid probably like, I can't remember now, Laura, can you pay? It was a few hundred pounds quid, and I yeah. was a bit, yeah, and I was a bit like, this is not good. But And this coming from someone who, by all means, I'm not an expert on that platform at all, but I'd like to think I kind of know a thing or two about it and thought this course would be right for me. But it was obviously just a great sales page. And it's set, so it's really difficult, isn't it, for a consumer, as in what I mean by consumer, as in you know, someone who's looking to buy buy into other people's products and services, it's really important to do their due diligence to actually find out whether, and this goes for all, Is you know, this is all platforms, actually that person is up to date. Are they talking about things on their socials, Pinterest, what have you, that is up to date? Because then you've got more confidence that yeah. their course is going to be up to date. Whereas in hindsight, when I looked at this person's content after I'd bought it, I realised that actually she's not even talking on her kind of organic content about these new features so right. I'm like was really like kicking myself afterwards that I hadn't done that research but I think even more so about Pinterest because of how much of a, a change it's been on. So on that note then what do you think is like what is the biggest mistake that you see people making with Pinterest because Laura's just said that there's all these new features is it that they're just not making the most of those features or they're not using them right or is there something else that people are just like what's a big common mistake? Do you know, I see so many different mistakes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's Just really to hard. The podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest mistake is people following old, outdated advice. They are repinning other people's pins like numerous times. Yes. That's probably got to be the biggest one. All their old pins again and again. And that is not good practice anymore. You'll get picked up in Pinterest's spam filter if you do that. Like, that is a massive no. So don't do that. See, yeah. see, that's fascinating to me because when I did use Pinterest, and, like, granted, this was probably, like, five years ago or so, probably more, and I was winging it, that was what I would, would have done mm. yeah. back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's what everybody was doing. Eh? There are certain schedulers, and I won't name them, where they still kind of encourage that sharing of other people's content, yeah. don't they? Because it's in the the kind of genetic makeup of the, of their tool, um, yeah. which is why I was completely blown away when I figured out that actually you're not really meant to be creating, uh, sharing other people's content. And I think because of this idea that you need to be sharing fresh pins, that actually changes the workload of a Pinterest manager quite considerably. Yeah didn't it yeah. like from years ago you could just keep repinning old pins and you could repin other people's pins now you're having to create and for some accounts it's a high high amount of pins you need isn't it yeah don't you so where i'm testing my, <clears throat> my own knowledge but it can it's quite a content creation heavy job isn't yeah it? it can be obviously it depends on the size of the business and what their website's like and how much content they've got to share i think for most businesses who are doing their own marketing like one fresh pin a day is is plenty but you know if you're a social media manager and you do have multiple clients with a lot of content then using one of those schedulers is good for that because obviously you're handling a lot of content but if you're doing it yourself or you've only got a couple of smaller clients then I would say you know be using the scheduler in Pinterest um, for that and they're actually yeah. this year they're going to be rolling out 30 day scheduling in advance at the minute you can only do two weeks Ooh. so that is getting expanded on which is really great and I love the Pinterest scheduler it's so easy and you can do editing inside it and all sorts of bits that not a lot of people know about oh maybe we should be doing that Laura <laughs> I'll put it on your yes. list <laughs> yeah honestly because i've tried yeah, it, it with clients and i get the best results from when i use the native pinterest scheduler 
Oh, that is interesting. You heard it here <laughs> first. And I think I think for us, it's just a case of because we're so used to using schedulers mm. as, you know, as social media marketers, it just it's just what you do, isn't it? And and I think, you know, if you've had the experience of using Facebook <laughs> scheduler, it's enough to put anybody off, isn't it? So um, maybe we need to embrace the inbuilt schedulers more. What is it about Pinterest that made you go, you know what, I'm going all in on Pinterest? Is it just because you love that platform or did you see that there was this kind of opportunity? How did you go through that process? Yeah, kind of a bit a mixture. So I I really love Pinterest. I love it's how it's such a positive platform. And I niche down, gosh, when was it? The start of 2020? It was at a time like when there's all sorts happening and I just loved how Pinterest is an escapism and it's, they really look after their creators and their businesses and they're actually really transparent about how to be successful on the platform. And, you know, once you know how to use it and it's almost like a formula that you can apply to using Pinterest and I was finding other social platforms more frustrating because they are constantly, you know, Instagram was constantly changing and I just really, I just really loved Pinterest. So I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try and see how this goes. And yeah, it's worked out really well for me. So. And so that was around the sort of same sort of time that you joined the inner hub. So, and yeah. over that time, I think Laura and I have probably seen some changes like behind the scenes in the membership, but in terms of your actual business, how is it different now than when it was when you first sort of niche down? Yeah. So I'd say like my clients are more national. They've got more of a presence. Um, whereas before I was working with more local businesses, my business was still kind of relying on that word of mouth whereas you know and since I joined the inner hub it's really given me the confidence to grow and expand and yeah it's completely changed the type of businesses that I work with and also you know my confidence has really grown over that time as well. And I think it's you know one thing that your business is it's going to be more robust now, isn't it? Because you have that variety of services. You're not just doing Pinterest management. You've got your courses, you do audits, you've got loads of other different avenues that you can bring in that revenue, which is, which is well, as you know, like we harp on about this a lot, but it's so important to kind of remove that risk of just doing one thing only in your business. So I think that's great. And I think, um, this, you know, it's a great example of how you can do that. Um, you should be very proud of yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I want to ask us a, a little bit more about your, your clients. Do you find that Pinterest works better for certain types of businesses than it does for others? Like, are there businesses that you just wouldn't take on because you know that Pinterest wouldn't help them maybe? So, yeah, the local kind of businesses that require people through their door, I would I advise not to bother with Pinterest. You know, if your work requires you to be local or vis- like a local photographer or something like that, then I would say Pinterest, you- you're better off focused elsewhere. Um, but a lot of people feel like they're missing out by not being on Pinterest because they-, they hear it's like this magical platform. Whereas actually for, for those kind of businesses, it- it's not quite right. Um, but for the majority of online businesses, you know, there is an audience on Pinterest. As long as you can deliver your services or your products like nationally or digitally worldwide even better then there is going to be an audience on Pinterest. Do businesses have to have like regular content like blogs to help that process of, of Pinterest success or can you get away with seeing success when you're really just sending people to maybe other social content or sales pages? Or the same blogs over time, maybe. No, you can't do that. You need you need fresh URLs, which is like the problem with um, you know managing other people's content. It's great if you have a client that's got loads and loads of blogs and they've got a website that is really rich in content, or a product based businesses with lots of URLs. Um, but if you are not producing content regularly external to Pinterest, then that's going to really hamper your success because you cannot keep 
linking back to the same URL um, because that's not considered fresh content. So you have to be really careful. And I mean, you can link to individual like Instagram posts because they have like unique URLs. That, that's another way of adding some fresh content into it. But ideally you want to be supplying Pinterest with as much fresh external content as you can. I think that's really interesting because we often hear people say that you need fresh pins on Pinterest. And to me, that sounds like it's literally the graphic that needs to be new. But the clarity over that it needs to be fresh URLs, that's a whole different ballgame. I never realised that. So thank you for that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good tip. So you can link to the same URL with a different graphic, but you also need to be supplying new URLs you can't just keep returning the same stuff over and over again because the very first time you share that url is the best opportunity and every time after that it gets weaker you know back to obviously laura is asking about what if whether all clients are good clients one thing i certainly used to find back in the day and i'm i'm led to believe this is still the same now but obviously correct me if i'm wrong that pinterest is a bit more of the long game it's not necessarily instant results. You're not going to suddenly get within a week, have that feeling of, oh my God, this is the best thing for, for us and we, we're going to nail it. We're going to take over the world. So how hard is that to get across to clients? Because I can just imagine it now. You're saying, oh, you know, Pinterest is a long game. You you need to be in it for a long time so you can kind of reap the benefits. But I can see how it rolls off the tongue but do clients really get that? Or do they, after a month, go, oh, I don't know, Faye, this isn't working. I've not seen, you know, increased traffic or whatever. Is it, is it actually a lot harder than it, it seems to convince people of that? Do you know, most of my management clients, if not all of them, they all understood that because they had tried the platform before, had a bit of success, not been able to maintain it. And then they came to me for help because they know, you know, they can't maintain that pinning sustained activity on the account. Yeah. So they do understand that. Um, but also there's ways when you're doing the monthly reporting that you can show them that actually this is working. We're seeing some extra traction here. And with the introduction of idea pins, they get, you know, a bit, a bit more quicker reach than your standard pins. So it's all it's yeah. all very much about explaining when you're giving the reporting, like what's actually happening with the account and trying to be as positive as possible. But yeah, I'd say most of them actually do understand that before they get started. You obviously manage that expectation well, I think, is what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I have it on my website in a big box. Do not expect <laughs> yeah. instant results. No, well, that's good because I do think that's a risk, isn't it? That, you know, because as you said before, there's a lot of people who think that Pinterest is this magic, yeah. you know, magic equation that they're missing from their, their business world. And nothing's easy, is it? No. If you had an account... I'm talking about ours now, Laura. <laughs> I just thought I'd try and get myself a bit of a... Can we pick your brains? Is this a can we pick your brains <laughs> type kind of situation? So if we came to you and said, right, our Pinterest account is... Nothing's really happening. <laughs> we're not getting anything. And we kind of feel like we're following the rules and we might not be. Is it sometimes worth just starting again? Because this is a conversation we've had before where over the time we've kind of dipped into it, probably done a bit of a rubbish job, come back out of it, left it dormant for like 12 months then gone in and dabbled around and then gone away again and left it. Is it sometimes worth just going, you know what, I'm just going to park this, let's create a whole new account and let's just start again? What do you think? Oh, I would be reluctant to kind of give advice on that without having a look behind the scenes at what's going on oh, good um, answer <laughs> check your analytics like if your if your pins are getting zeros it might be that you're caught up in some kind of filter from pinterest so it might be worth reaching out to them to make sure that your account hasn't been flagged for something first um if they come back and say mm. it's all clear 
then I, I'm not sure it would make a difference, to be honest. I, you know, make sure you're doing your keyword research, spotting mm. content opportunities and content gaps in the keyword research is really important and tapping into trends. You know, Pinterest is really, it gives you the information. It tells you what people are searching for and their, their new trends tool has been updated recently. So that's worth taking a look at and trying to tap into those keywords. And if you're still not seeing any traction, then I don't know if I would recommend stopping it and starting a new one. That's my gut yeah. feeling. But, um, you know, sometimes where you just think you can't see the woods for the trees. And sometimes I just think it's like when you just want a fresh piece of paper. Yeah. But no, I, I've listened to your <laughs> advice. I won't delete the account. But on that note, I've, <laughs> I've got kind of like a follow up question for that. If somebody was starting fresh today, mm. like what is the biggest opportunity for them? What's the one thing that they should maybe try and get right from the start? So getting right from the start is your keyword research. So it's quite easy to do in Pinterest. You know, you type your words into the search bar, see what pops up, making sure your profile is optimised. You've got your keywords in there. Your boards are all optimised. And like one of the biggest mistakes I see people do is like they have these cute little names for their boards. That yeah. only makes sense to them. But for the Pinterest algorithm, it means nothing. So make sure like, you know, your your boards are so clearly labelled that it's so obvious what it's about. That's the absolute best start that you could do. Do you think that social media managers should be using Pinterest for their own businesses? Ooh, that is a good question. Um, if you want to offer Pinterest, then yes, I think you do need to be on Pinterest. Um because inevitably people are going to look at your Pinterest profile to see if you can actually manage and maintain a Pinterest um, account. And, you know, I do like to have a little nosy at what other people are doing. And sometimes when I, I check their accounts, there's not much happening. So um, I always try to be active on Pinterest when I can. And if you want to attract people into your world who love Pinterest, then yeah, you definitely need to be on Pinterest. And what if you don't offer Pinterest? Do you think that social media managers should still use it? I would start by doing some keyword research, seeing if people are actually searching for those. And I don't see why not. Like people, people use Pinterest for social media advice. And to be honest, actually, there's probably not a lot of other social media managers on there, maybe. I'm, Ooh, I'm good not, opportunity Yeah, then. it could be a good opportunity for you. So it's worth researching. Love that. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Watch everyone go and jump onto Pinterest as soon as they've <laughs> listened to this episode. <laughs> I think if you're creating <laughs> blogs and stuff for your social media management website, um, and you've got content to repurpose, why not? What industries do you think, are, like, back in the day, <laughs> as I keep referring to, like, the things that used to be really big on Pinterest was food, like, food bloggers, like, recipes um, and interiors. Now, me, I personally use Pinterest for interiors, but is that still the same? Are there other industries now? Like now you can do a bit more kind of e-commerce on there. Has, has that taken over? Like how, what would you say the most popular companies to be or niches to be on there? You know, to a certain extent, it's still the same. It's, it's a visual platform, you know, and people use it to plan like garden makeovers and what's going in their room and what they're going to buy. But, I wouldn't say that is to the detriment of any other service niches. Um, again, I would always recommend doing your research, but you know, people who use Pinterest, they're, they're very loyal to the platform and they'll always go to Pinterest to find their ideas and find what it is that is the the answer to their problem and then they'll save it all there and then they'll come back and revisit uh, i like to monitor what's happening on my website quite a lot and i notice like some of my blogs keep getting clicks from the same people from pinterest time and time again so 
I wouldn't say it, it's not a platform that's just for hobbies and things like that. That's it's that's a myth. Interesting. I always used to use it as a social media manager for content ideas, mm. personally, back in the day, again. <laughs> <laughs> Faye this has been brilliant thank you so much there's been so many awesome tips and I'm sure that everyone who's listening is probably thinking how on earth do I find Faye I need to go and find out about her course I need to go and look at her on Pinterest so where is the best place for them to come and find you oh thank you I've really enjoyed talking to you both um, so the best place people can find me is my website which is strangesocial.com I'm quite active on LinkedIn and Instagram as well. And also you can find me on Pinterest. I respond anywhere, to be honest. <laughs> Amazing. We'll pop all of your links in the show notes so that people can just click them and come over and say hello. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your time. It's been brilliant. Thank you for having me. So we hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you want to join Faye and a whole heap of other Pinterest managers in our membership, The Inner Hub, you can go to the link in our show notes or just head over to the twolauras.com forward slash inner hub. Um, we can't wait to welcome you into there. And if you've got any other questions or you want to just chat to us about this episode, then you know where to find us. And we will be back same time, same place next week. Ta-ra! Toodles! Toodles!